Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in the Thousand Week Reich in which we are playing as, what are we playing? The Perm Soviet Government as you can see on screen right here, the Perm Soviet Government. Now, at the time of this recording, Russia has gotten a rework so we're here to explore what they have, but a fractured union. The Soviet Union was greatly damaged by the significant losses in the Patriotic War. The sad state of affairs is only worsened upon Premier Joseph Stalin's disappearance during the chaotic relocation. During the interim period, in the temporary capital, Per Mikhail Kalinin assumed the reign of party leader of the USSR. However, Kalinin's declining health proved to be a vital tool for power grabbing, allowing La Ventri Beria greater influence in the functions of the state. As the interior minister, Beria used his powerful position to launch purges against his future enemies upon Kalinin's death in 46. Uh, Gregory Malenkov was sworn in as the next chairman, but Beria was quick to overturn the line of succession, accusing Malenkov's gross incompetence as part of the reason for the Union's shortcomings, then proceeding to enact a new wave of political purges against its political opponents and various other military officials. Amidst the chaos, a plot by traitors to the South or to the Union was revealed, causing many conspirators to escape eastward, forming their own separatist entities that are currently beyond our sphere of control. While this move might have saved their lives, they have allowed Beria to remain as the nation's new paramount leader. With the venture Beria and Mikhail Suslov, Forming an ad hoc solitary alliance, Beria's characteristics drastically shaped the dual moderate stance after he assumed leadership, granting many political prisoners amnesty while announcing capitalistic plans attempting to rescue the dying economy. But his popularity within the establishment remains low, with secret plots forming in the shadow. Soon the motherland will be won, and as we saw in the beginning here, we do have a whole... What is this thing? Where is it? Where'd it go? Um, there's a UN screen, of course. Oh, here it is. Soviet power struggle screen. We have... Turkinich? Okay. We have Bulganin? We have Mr. Suslov, and then Leventry, the NKVD faction, of course. Um, we have the Orthodox faction, the Revisionist faction, as well as Colonel KFC here, the Kaliningist, but revising the, re the revised economic plan. Stalin's economic policy, which focused primarily on the collectivization of agriculture and the rapid development of the industrial sector, while letting the agricultural sector work in the fields without any subsidies or time, was a primary factor that destroyed the Union. We had to look back and remember what Cameron Lennon told us during the Civil War, arguing that agriculture must have a share in the state economy, that we must open markets to reach the roads of Marx, but now we have, that. We have in mind that too much reliance on dependence on the word can damage our income and lead to the backwardness of our economy. If we succeed in bringing together a mix of civilian and military industries, agriculture facilities with the, with the nationalization of public sectors such as banks, we can ensure that our economy experiences the boom we had between the 22 and 25. Nice. Arturo, Arturo, uh, we're already a play. We don't need to see that. Nuke system? Uh, hopefully it's not too different, but yeah. We had to figure out which way we're going to go, but we have the Union is in shambles, which is really bad for us. We also have a fractured army. Quite not good for us either. We have party factionalism, which is god-awful. We also have the NKVD's reign of terror, which is eh, not great. It's okay. It's not bad. No, just, I would, I'd, rather not, I'd rather get rid of it. And we have public discontent. Of course, discontent. Results, our initial results of the REP. Our hopes proved to be justified because we received reports from villages and cities. Looking at the documentation reports sent to us, we can agree that with the leading econ economics experts, that the measures we had taken showed in what situation we find ourselves the results which are quite good and encouraging if we push through a couple of mistakes we made in the initial parts of our plan. Refining those mistakes, we will be further able to approach the Politburo with a report that we will further encourage development of our plan. And report to the Politburo. We have compiled a report to be submitted today, or during today's meeting, at the Politburo, so that we can move forward with our plan, which we have developed, intending to repair the desperate situation left behind by Stalin. After his economic policies ravaged the Union, with small changes in the report, neglecting some bad words that might affect the decision when it comes to approving the REP, but we do not doubt that the results that were shown in the short term could lead to a reflection during the meeting, but again, we have to be careful, just in case that reconsideration can occur, of course. Initial results. Launched by the General Secretary of the Venture Beria in 1948, the revised economic plans Beria's magnum opus, revoking much of Stalin's collectivization efforts. The RAP attempted to rescue the dying economy with a series of capitalistic reforms with efforts, such as allowing private enterprise to operate, reintroducing a market system for most produced goods, and employing experts for state industries. While the economy is <laughs> still quite pathetic, the RAP has made noticeable progress in improving the Union's economy across the spectrum and looks all positive, despite the fact that some of the major underlying issues are starting to surface. Great progress! The second phase of the RIP. Pushing the next pushing the plan through a meeting with the Politburo, not Bukharin, but the Politburo, we can turn the next chapter in this novel called the RIP. By securing short term gains in agriculture in smaller urban areas, we can confidently approach the construction and upgrading of existing factories, as well as opening opportunities for the poor people most affected by Stalin's disastrous policies. Civilian and military production must be on the next head of our reforms, and if we manage to apply RIP to this type of production, with at least the same amount of success as agriculture, we will have a healthy economic profit. 
At least that's the hope, you know. As we're slowly losing political power every single day, so what's the point of getting even political power then? A report to the Politico Bureau. Members of the Politico Bureau gathered in Perm each issued a document to report on the progression of the revised economic plan. Beria stood and read its contents to the entire Politico Bureau, but a few notable members were seemingly unamused by these reports. For example, besides a few nonchalant collapse, Mikhail Suslov ignored Beria's briefing. Meanwhile, Ivan Turkinich raised concerns about the growing divide between urban and rural citizens. Nikolai Bolgandin was the most enthusiastic about the report, but suggested that the country needed to commit even more drastic action, which sparked a heated document or argument, resulting in multiple Multiple members are repeatedly calling Bulganin a filthy revisionist. Nonetheless, the meetings ended in silence, with members returning to their normal duties in a sour mood. The atmosphere is tense, but not tense enough. Barrier remains. Barrier removed the perm plot. Civilian sector? Military sector. Military business relationship? Handing the RE paint men? I'll do the civilian sector first. But of course, we gotta go through some military factories as well. Oh, uh, we need. Oh, God. We need a lot here, don't we? Yeah, we don't even have any ports. Not good. We're gonna need a lot of trucks too. We're gonna need a lot. Uh, uh four already. Four already. Go four already. Oh, can we actually use this here? Is that no, I don't think we can change anything here. Yeah, it doesn't look like I mean there's stuff here, which is nice. Um oh, OMS transportation, new Soviet plants. Oh, that's not bad. Perm control weapon manufacturer? My thirty percent, not bad. Oh, that stuff's not too bad. Do we actually have a navy? Yeah, we do. We're, we're training them, which, which we, and we have no fuel. Go figure. One of the two main problems we have to devote time to is the light and heavy industry of the civil, civil sector, the production of basic things from food to tex textile products, whose production will have to be stronger than the agricultural sector, concerning the progress made by farmers because of the period from 1922 to 25. It showed that if farmers could overpower the industrial sector, we can never reach our goal. Therefore, we will redirect our investments, and as well as allowing foreign invaders a share. Or inv not invaders, but investors a share towards the light industry. See what happens. I'm going to do a lot of research stuff here too. So, Bulganin, Kruglov. Oh, it's uh, it's okay, not bad. Um, we have Molotov, of course, and then we also have Mr. Suslov. Oh, we also have who here? Chuikov. No, not bad. That's actually not bad. Speed, daily army speed gain. Thank God. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, Andreev. Okay, not bad. Kuznetsov. Uh, Kuzin, Kuznetsov. I always say his name wrong, but not bad. Kuznetsov. And Vershinin. Very cool. The guys are cast. But let's see what else. Second phase, the civilian sector, my friends. <clears throat> People testing atomic bombs, hand of the RAP men. One of the main products of our economic policy is the emergence of strata, i.e. classes, which can represent one of the bigger problems in our war against classes, the middle class, which lies between the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, is getting bigger and bigger, which in the long run could be one of the triggers for the fall of our union. If you do not pay enough attention to it, the R.E.P. men, no matter how much they show the success of our economic reforms, can easily become the main cause of our decline. We have to keep that in mind, as we are trying to build up, well, some civilian factors is that we really want to. We're out of stuff. We're still training our soldiers, too. And also, uh, if you didn't know, at the time of this recording, um, two, Thousand Week Reich is updated with the No Step Back DLC, so we're on the latest patch of the time of this recording, so it should work fine. Should. I love this guy's mustache. Holy crap. And we have Pavel Batov leading some tanks who... Hmm, Pavel Batov. I've never heard his name before. Hmm, where is he from? How do I know him? I know... I learned a slight bit about history because of this this game, but, you know, the civilian sector. As part of the uh, revised economic plan, the capitalist practices have been introduced to the civilian sector. As a result, of course, uh, commodity production has been increasing in a somewhat stable light industry goods market has been established, but when the second phase of the RAP is being drafted, the government has split it on how the union should approach this question in a proper manner. Recollect globalization? Uh, distribute the surpluses to the poor? That was not bad. Privatization? Oh. Paternal autocracy? Hire more talents for state enterprises. So, I'll be honest here. I don't know which way we're going to go. I know that some... I, I was going, there's already people on my Discord server who want me to go a certain way. So, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to see the influence here. The NKVD. Barry has already got a lot. Mm, was a teacher, huh? Kaliniists. Uh, humane form of communism. And then we have the revisionists like we saw earlier. Fix the situation burst by capitalism or change. So we can... We have the Orthodox faction, the conservative wing of the government, hoping for the return of the old glory. And then we have the NKVD faction. Ranges from a former like ultra conservative. Well, that seems like the easiest one to do, the NKVD faction. So we'll go with that one. I apologize that we're, we're not going to go other routes that people want me to go. But we don't have political power, so that's not like it's going to hurt us, right? 
It can't hurt us anymore, right? Please tell me I'm right. Ah, the military sector. Military sector. It's enough to say that to understand what was the main cause of the collapse of the Soviet Union during the war, insufficient attention and maintenance of the military sector caused the collapse of our army, but this time it'll not happen, either now or in the future, because if we lower just one look or I only have a small movement, moment of inattention, everything will collapse. The part of the budget that is divided for two purposes. One for them being the military sector will aim at the state mediation within production so that we can monitor what is being produced at the moment, but also choose what will be of far greater importance to us. My god, this mod has way, way too many events happening all at the same time. But, I mean, that's a good thing that actually things are going on instead of just countries just lying there, literally just dormant, just doing nothing, just there for color. Actually, who's in the who's in, uh, US of A? Oh, Truman. And, of course, we have... Oh, he did get a different portrait. Look at that. He, he's facing forward the entire time with the R.E.P. men. Product of various capitalization efforts, businessmen have expanded their operations, started running shops and other forms of corporations. Alongside this, a new middle class has appeared, dubbed by many as the R.E.P. men. These R.E.P. men have acquired better living conditions and the ability to purchase extra commodities compared to the typical Soviet citizens. This increase in wealth has also increased their social influence and status, and the Soviet government must pick a position regarding this issue. Right, the dangerous ones? We must tax them. Uh, this clearly sent a progress. Huh. I love, I love how you get different bonuses when you choose these different ones. I love it so much. The military business relationship. Liberalization can never be accomplished by useful side effects that can benefit us. So it's not the case either. We've noticed an extraordinary closeness between the newly established at the same time older companies within the army, in which they find different similarities and make agreements beyond our knowledge. This can lead to backfiring that can bite us hard on the big booty if we don't pay attention to this so far benign phenomenon. And actually, I pause it there because I want to see if we can actually send volunteers. Oh, I can't sell orders. Dang it. Why? I want Army XP, please. Wait, what do you mean we can? It says we can. Why can't we can? Oh, no. We have at least 30 divisions. Oh, boy. Is it because we have no fuel? It must be because of that. I'm just kidding. It's not because of that. <gasps> we have one city. Oh, the Labor, look, Labor Party is one in the UK. Japan, no more war for you. Which I still he plays Japan, but, you know, I've heard they're really boring. Hello. Choose me. Why can't you enter there? Nice flag. I need to play as Muscovine. Then again, I need to play as a lot of different nations. I just don't have time for it, man. Uh, yeah. Pretty, they're kind of slightly similar. Defeat on the border. Wait, what? Our brief border war between German troops and Soviets proved that our forces were not yet ready? Deliberate the motherland as our forces were defeated by the German garrisons. We'll fight another day. Uh. What? 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 Hello? There was no border war here. I literally have the soldiers on the border here, though. What? Ah. Whatever. The military sector. The biggest industry of the uh, Soviet Union. The military sector is the most important part of the Soviet Union. The regime's focus on military production is largely unchanged remains as a sole issue that most members the, can agree upon. Since this matter of national reclamation and security is simply non-negotiable in the minds of our people, with the profits of RAP flowing in, we must reinvest them in the military. Let the guns flow in the great patriotic home front. Comrades, while the Russia demands and needs your help, the reform of our economy, as well as the struggle for the proletariat of our beautiful nation, is on a terrific rise, but with your help, we can bring it to a whole new level. If you apply for a new one, reconstruction today. You'll be the new heroes of the Soviet Union if you decide to fight for just for a just goal, for a new and better Soviet Union, for what we bled during for bled for during the German attack or during the war against the bourgeoisie, people who decide to be union builders today, will have a secure future for the children tomorrow. Help us, we need you to help you to help us to help you. Yes, exactly. <sighs> that's a lot of red, a lot of no guns. We do have a few trains though. That's kind of nice. Uh, logistics is at six percent, which is not great. We need more trucks. We have more than enough trains. It is fine actually. Always remember. Just going, priority for motorization is super, 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 super important. I wish we had tanks. We have 11% strength. Hey, I've got this. <laughs> Figure out what an AK-47 is in 1952, but okay. Military business ties. During the reopening of private enterprises, the military is engaged in business ties with certain uh, corporations. Some military formations have been... Or it's outsourcing the task of maintaining military supplies of private individuals, which might b both be a blessing and a curse. The central government is aware of this developing situation. It's finally time to make its decision on the issue. We'll make a decision. Did we lose color this relationship? I like that army XP. Political power, PP, ah, Beria. Unpopular dictator. He didn't do anything wrong. He totally didn't do anything wrong. Don't just don't look him up and you won't know if he did anything wrong. Just take my word of advice for it. He totally didn't do anything wrong. Never mind. Just look him up, man. He is a mm, mm, French African Confederation. Why would you want to ally with him? 
Ah, it's just weird anyways. Go do 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 do. There you go. And then go one, two, three. There you go. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Just so we have more than enough people here. Because we got attack bombers, we got cast, we have manager and space flights. Uh, we're not making any attack bombers, are we? No, we're not. We should probably get some. Because I'll still use them in the end. Interceptors, I don't really like using interceptors. Because if we're using fighters, I don't want to use interceptors. I don't want to think that hard. Pre war strap bombers, no, thank you. And you know what? I don't like them as much as possible, so. Oh, it's because they're killing each other. Um, interceptors, I don't want to even see you. I'm sorry. I, I'm very biased against you. They might be really good to use. I, I, I don't know, but I just don't want, I don't want to use both at the same time. Why can't we send volunteers? Oh, attendant intervention. Is that part early? No, it's, it's already August. This mod can move pretty quickly, usually. Nicolas Vorontas, ultra-nationalism versus fascists. Some might ask, what's the difference? And someone in the comments might actually explain it to me, which I sort of already know, but you know, you never know. Some people might say, oh, a revolution. Wait, a revolution to have a monarch? Nikola Mikh Mikhailov, the greater home front. Since the collapse of the Soviet front, a new kind of war has been raging ever since, the so-called war home front. The government is desperately trying to outproduce Germany in the hopes of eventually returning to Moscow. And as a revised economic plan seems to be working, the political bureau has announced a new offensive on the home front, aiming to ramp up production across the board for the upcoming unification war. Workers unite! Yay, we get stuff! Oh, go to war economy! We have no political power, but the party congress. The division has hit us hard, but we must not give up on what we are fighting for, to secure the future of the Union. Which is on shaky feet with its knees slowly kneeling. We must make decisive decisions. And that means not only changes in internal reforms that have been planned for a long time to prevent internal division, the bigger gap of which could destroy us completely, but also reconsider what is happening at the very top of our party. Our goal is simple, but it must be approved by the Congress of the Communist Party itself with votes for or against reforms. Our future depends on Congress. Preparation for the Congress, though. So. Prepare for the upcoming 19th Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Security and permits have been adjusted accordingly. However, the government is presented with a choice, the choice between increasing the NKVD presence in the city and using the Red Army as additional support for the city's security. Increase the presence of the NKVD? Hmm. Use the Red Army for reinforcements? I think we got it. Comrade Leventry Pavlovich pa Barry has endured his difficult challenges levied against his administration. His reign as a general secretary will continue, and he'll surely leave the Soviet Union out of the slump. The criticize the Chinese invasion? No, oh, you better not crit you might not attack them. That's what America says. It's we got a lot of people here. Yuri Orlov, huh? Who's that? Semi-industrialized. That's not terrible. Authoritarian system, actually. Um, this one's actually not bad habit because you have a consumer's economy. You get hit really hard with. Well, maybe, well, maybe it's not as hard. It used to be you get really hard with uh, debuffs. What? Well, actually, let's see. No, minus 15% civilian construction speed. Yeah, I still get hit a little bit. What sucks, but whatever. The first party congress held after the embarrassing retreat from Moscow. The 19th Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union features all major politicians that have chose to remain on the side of the perm. Many new faces have appeared since the last Congress, as the party members that have fled to Moscow, or no, uh, fled to Novosibirsk and Krasnoyarsk, have refused to interact with Perm. Few foreign dignitaries uh, have agreed to attend the Congress, with the only notable ones being a handful of representatives attending on behalf of the Communist Party of China. With the uh, members gathered and ready for the upcoming days of Congress, a brief opening ceremony is held on Congress to begin. Let us begin. So, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, we have ultra visionary Marxism, which sounds like Zidane, but it sounds awesome. A grand warlord sounds awesome. The no Soviet Republic of Novosibirsk, led by Vosnesensky. That's where Vosnesensky went. Do you focus? Ah, oh, I've got to play some too. Oh my goodness, that looks awesome. Uh, we have a Kazakh military Ognung or Okrug. Vlasov is down here. Wait, what? Oh, we're getting to the independence. How many? Does everyone have, need? Fo okay, I've got it. Oh, how? At the time of recording, we're not going to be here tomorrow or in two days. Krasnoyarsk Soviet government, led by Zukov. Oh my goodness, and Yenis. Yenisex government led by Ah uh, Brezhnev. He's got some furry eyebrows, Jesus. And then we have the Russian Is that Putin? No. Anatoly Rogozin. Report on the progress of the RAP. General Secretary Leventry Barry most first to speak. Informing the part of the progress of the revised economic plan. His focus is well. Leventry Barry exclaimed that significant progress has been made within years. The Soviet Union will be capable of besting the Nazi invaders and drive them out of Russia. He also mentioned the improving economy to the party, praising the party officials for the hard work they've done throughout the years. And then they all clapped. 
because they had to clap. Sosov's speech, head of the Secretariat Org Bureau. Mikhail Sosov was the second to perform a speech for the Communist Party and was invited to speak on the Operation Summary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Mikhail Daddy Soslov started his speech in a timid manner, following the scripts closely and focusing on the report. However, the speech became increasingly unpredictable as Soslov made seemingly passive aggressive remarks towards the reformist elements of the party at one point. He commented on the Communist Party and Novus Obiesk, sarcastically saying that the revisionism present in this room is something that even traders of Novus Obiesk would gasp at. Made a cheer for Suslov. He looks kind of handsome. In his own special way. No, he's not like Hadrish handsome or Oswald Mosley handsome, but our anti-German crusade. The youngest member of the Politburo, Ivan Turkinich, or Turkinich, was a third major politician that invited the former speech. The main goal of the speech was to reaffirm the Communist Party's commitment on the elimination of those god-dang Nazi threats from the Soviet Union, or towards the Soviet Union. In his fiery speech, Turkinich called for the anti-German crusade, calling for every Soviet man, woman, and child to remain restless until the workers' paradise is achieved, with, and was praised with unanimous support and a warning. Uh, urgent activity of the possible conspirators, intelligence officers have captured a conspirator within the Red Army station on the outskirts of Perm, attached to the list of associates related to this conspirator. Preventive actions are recommended. Act immediately. Perform secret, act, secret arrest at once. The warning did not reach the agency. What is a coup? What happens when you get cooed? Well, I guess uh, you, have, you should do that one if you don't want to get... Barrier and but he's already got some daddy influence. Oh, he doesn't he go up to 100? Faction influence, 100 max. Extraordinary session, a special speech. That was not initially planned. Barrier performed a brief 15 minute speech to the attendees. The subject was national security and party unity. Barrier condemned some recent incidents as enemies of the state plotting for the union's demise, heading towards the latest arrest performed in the crushing of a possible coup. Several members of the political bureau were visibly uneasy by Barrier's speeches. The message is clear the party's boss. Oh, get some feel back. Look at that. 1300 days, not bad. Could be better, but whatever. In the last days of the party congress, the motion to pick a new central committee has finally been arrived. Alongside this is a secret confidence vote determining if Barry is truly fit for duty as the nation's paramount leader. Well, eventually Barry can choose to entertain with this idea, this general secretary can simply remind the members to vote in the correct manner. Let the party decide. The warning did not reach the agency. Barry stays. Well, we could use the stability. Barry stays, hey! Despite the opinion of some members of the political bureau, the party has placed their faith in LaVentra Barry's leadership abilities and wants to get elected Barry to continue serving as a daddy general secretary of the daddy communist party of the Soviet Union. The leadership stays. Ah, oh, he is a dude. The new cabinet. We're in the Congress brought a significant opportunity that we must seize. We managed to find out who is for us and who is against our government in just a few days, which we were perhaps the most important few days in her lives, apart from the fallen destruction of her beloved mother Russia. By eliminating the names that oppose me, I will be able to create a cabinet that will be completely loyal to my decisions, and that will not spend a single second before they decide to vote for one of my ideas or resolutions. In this way, we will save mother Russia. Political power, we didn't need it. We have four cities now. Ho! Oh, the Germans better be ready for us. As we have different types of divisions here. We have 12 divisions that are 18 combo width, which is actually at the time of recording, I think not a bad division uh, combo width to actually use. It's actually not too bad, so. And we'll go talk about the other ones soon, too. Ooh, a lot of this stuff. Okay, it's not a lot of stuff, but hey, let's see. Reorganize the party. I love parties. After such destabilizing events, the outdated structure of the Communist Party must be properly reorganized. All components of the Communist Party will cooperate closely to execute the orders of the Barry administration without hesitation. Of course, as an in inevitable side effect of this reorganization, certain members of the party will be huh, negatively impacted. Oh, Bulganan? Oh, goodbye. So we have six divisions of 12 combo with kind of like basically NK, literally NKVD divisions. And we have 12 divisions of 12 combo with basically the exact same thing, Light of Victory. But... Changing the orthodox leadership. Oh no, the disgraced Suslov failed to dispose Barry and was speculated to be a main organizer of a foiled coup attempt. As an act of self preservation, Suslov was willingly to resign his post of Org Bureau Secretary from the Politburo. Out of the kindness of his heart, General Secretary Barry appointed Mikhail Suslov to steel production in Magnitogorsk. In his absence, so Stalin's protege, by Cheslav, Molotov assumed the leadership of the orthodox faction while maintaining a cooperative manner towards Barry's NKD faction. A useful old man. Minister of Economy. Oh! Mario! Oh, Mario. Uh, recall the generals. Uh, General Ivan Stepanovich Konev and General Andrei Andreevich Lasov accomplished their duties in pacifying the chaotic regions of Kazan and Kazakhstan. Kazan. Their service is no longer required and their authority must be returned to the central government no matter if they comply or not. Kazan. Huh. Kazan and Kazakhstan. Took a niche. Disgraced. An official bulletin released by the temporary party headquarters of 
located in Perm, Ivan Tukhanich has been found guilty of bonapartism and was immediately expelled from the Communist Party in a more proper announcement. Party officials and investigators from the NKVD have accused a former partisan of attempting to build a cult of personality to subvert revolutionary action. As yet another act of benevolence, the Ventry Barry opted to forgive these crimes and allowed Ivan to live quietly in the countryside while under NKVD surveillance. Without their charismatic young leader, the Kaliningrad faction has evaporated. A good threat removed. Very good. A uh, tight deadline. I like him. Tight. Hmm. Stevenson, no idea who that is, like I said before. Tartar -tar insurrection. Well, get rid of those Tatas and we'll see what we can do with them. Throw. You can't throw them in a gas chamber, right? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Hmm. Hey, we got some medium tanks, though. I got some anti air. Yeah, anti air's not bad. And anyone else we want to remove? Yes, uh, Bogdan handled. On the surface, Nikola Bogdan and Levantry Beria seem to be political allies and cooperate in the execution of the revised economic plan, but this was far from the reality of the situation. Secretly, the NKVD has gathered enough evidence to prove Bogdan's connections to the foiled coup just weeks ago. While Beria and Bogdan still exchange pleasantries in public settings, the latest edition of the political bureau com composition and the minister of positions have been shuffled. As a reward for Nikolai Bogdan's cooperation with the reform plan, he has been assigned to the most sacred position of Minister of Arctic Fisheries. Sent to the northernmost naval hub to oversee fishy, village fishermen. I hope he enjoys the frozen ways. I hear it's cold this time of year, but you know, whatever. Governor. Oh, Boreat. Uh, ooh. Military organization. Bakshiv. Oh, it's slight fast. Uh, famine. And, uh, it's a little bit of terrorism. Never hurt anybody. Don't quote me on that one. Krasnorsk, Soviet government. Uh, Mongolian People's Republic. He's kind of handsome. He's got some tight, tight cheeks. What am I thinking? Oh my goodness, what the heck. Anyways. Yoshida Shigeru. And we have, ooh, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, DPRK. Best Korea, Pak Han Yong. How's China doing? Shin Kai shek's not dead yet. Oh, Israel, don't lose. Oh, we have a Jewish state. No, we have Palestine. Wait, how big is a Jewish state? They don't have any focus yet. Ah, there is party. With no grandiose announcement or any ceremony, little by little, the opponents of Levantry Beria's faction were just defeated. The entire party has learned to fear Beria's masterful abilities in eliminating his opposition, choosing to remain quiet despite their own political alignment. The General Secretary's position is now consolidated, and the party now lays firmly within his fingers. The General Secretary is absolute. I think I read this one, so there you go. And a great struggle. Oh! We get 10% more political power? Party factionalism with fractured party. How do you get a new plan? Oh. Huh. Party factionalism, huh? Oh, this is not too bad. Second revised economic plan? Sounds great. There he goes. So we... Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, my goodness. Oh, construction speed? Or research speed? Even Oh, more research speed. Look at this. We have trains. That's too big for its own portrait. And then we have a smaller train. That's war austerity. Oh, so it has... Actually, not half the cost, but 20 less cost. Oh. Oh, hello. Russian. Wait, what? It's always Rozhevsky, which makes sense. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a Rozhevsky as much as the next guy, but... Impotent army. Oh, that's not good. Divided party. That sucks. Oh, you have a renewed famine. For the revolution's not bad. And you're just starving all here. Okay. Do you have any focus here before you might die? God dang, Israel taking names. The national revolution begins. Drive them to the wastes. Oh, that's not bad. More attack. I like that. Very nice. And the Jews have taken over Lebanon? Oh, they have... Bro, Sir. Oh, you have all of Syria as a puppet. Wow. Of course, you have less than a million people here, and they have over a million people in... Where? Do you even have a million people? You took over Lebanon, which is not even your core. Union agreements. Great power designs. Mapai dominated politics. Defense of the Jewish nation. Well, that's very strong, but only on core territory. Ah. <sighs> Wow. Regals the generals. Oh, great struggle. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh, we're, we're over them. Okay, we're immediately over them. Uh, is it just... Because I'm... Uh, okay, they're still fighting. Oh, they're, they're doing border war crisis thing. Okay. Whatever. We should still do okay here, no, no matter what. I did give our guys plans, right? So, single receiver action. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's not do that one. It's a little bit ahead of time. There you go. Should do okay. How many divisions do they have? Up to 23... Yeah, that'd be pretty hard to defend against. Especially if we cut them off at, you know, here. Let's go here immediately. And they get set off. Oh, we have to actually pay attention to supply bases. God dang it. Oh, the daddy's dead! He's kind of angry. He looks angry. Uh, I want you to go straight for there and go there. Get the supply points. 
Oh, we got a supply point. But it's not operating yet, which is fine. Excuse me, sir. Would you like to talk about a Lord and Savior, no, elementary barrier? Pavlich killed. No one cares. Oh, they got, hmm. The guys are actually not, oh my god. They're just stacked with boys. I mean, men. Boys and men. Whatever. Yikes. Ben Gunn assassinated. All right. You guys are trying to, too. That's very good. They're more equipped than we are, it looks like. Potentially. Well, that's fine. We'll get him. We'll get him. Go to Yav here. Go ahead. The March of Paris. Okay. So he plays France in this, focus, uh, in this mod, but whatever. Devotions? Devotions. Divisions don't seem very strong, but hopefully it's getting more army XP. Because the Sahara. We have XP already? already? Yeah, yeah. It's working a little bit. Good okay, funeral of Big Daddy Hitler. Would anyone like to come to the capital? Balakovo, I hear it's nice this time of year in the middle of, or the beginning of April. No, you'd like to suffer more casualties, okay. Yeah, the Fractured Army and NKVD Drainage are really hurting us so badly here. We're getting like no army XP doing this. I suggest in case, hopefully it's not too bad. I hope we get some more guns too, that'd be very nice. Go up to there, go up to there. I thought I already did this, but whatever. Go up to there, go up to a thousand. Slavic Revolt, all right. Second, um, I hate. I played as this. I played this before, and I won as Hungary in the first war that they have here, and it's so bad. I do not recommend it. If you try to win, it's better just to lose. It literally is just better to lose. But oh my goodness, it was so bad. Nikol Vlasov, envoy from Finland, the man from Helsinki arrives without fuss up bustle. Few are there to witness his arrival. In a black clad motorcade with a Finnish flag, and even fewer welcome him. The government of Perm has long forgotten the protocol for the diplomacy outside the saber rattling. The consensus, in fact, is that the following unification, the Russia's will sit in splendid isolation, free from the machinations of international capital. The premier sighs as he examines the dossier with a representative sitting opposite him. There's little that can be done about this man, and certainly the government has no reason to make enemies where so many already exist. There is, however, a distinct lack of things for the representative to actually do, something that he does not hesitate to put in doubt. The man from Helsinki smiles. He has an idea or two. That evening, the representative visits the hospital, almost identical to the others in the city, save for the letters emblazoned outside of it. It carries a bulky case, packed with something wooden and heavy. Nurses escort him to the children's ward, an awkward Russian. He greets the children by name, asking about their hobbies, their favorite foods, and their family lives. Then he pulls out something boxy and angular from the case and begins to play. The children sit in trance as the melodies flow like melting ice from the hands of the man, uh, Kantel. The man calls it. It sounds like an angel walking in the forest like ch whispered childs. A whisp child whispers. The man nods, grinning. He says, In Finland there are many angels and many forests for them to walk in. Shall I tell you more about them? It's a beautiful land, much like yours. Recall the Asof. Demands annexation when selected. Konev's death. Ukrainian collapse. Oh, yeah. You guys are killing each other here, too. Huh? Well, we'll try it. The military coup within the Kazan military Okrug has ended the pathetic rebellion of the Marshal. End of the line. Well, look at all those guys we get. Kerachenko? Well, do we get you? Do we get you? Oh, well, that was over here, I guess, but whatever. Um, there we go. This one might not be as easy. I'm not going to attack just yet. I would get some more um, organization first. But if you want to just go straight to Aralsk, that'd probably be a good thing to do. Take all the victory points you can there. Um, three, two, one. Let's grow! Ah, oh, divisions. Hey, not bad. Uh, what's this? Alma Alta Red. No, we're good. Bosnia declared independence? Maybe because Yugoslavia and Serbia and all these other nations again. Does Turkey have a unique focus tree yet? That'd be cool if they did. No, they don't. Darn it. I'm halfway tempted to make cavalry, though, but we don't get any buffs to it. I want. If I want to make, use cavalry, I want buffs. Oh, there goes Bosnia and the Italians. And the Italians and the Italians. Abasta? Alright, you should you go right here and here. Oh, are they fighting someone else? Oh, the Alma Alta Red Army. Oh, that's why they're fighting. If you get your greater Romania, huh? Do you have any fo No, you don't. So, who, who's here? Balrozaran Mami Shuli. How Mami Shuli. Members of the Great Struggle, Iron Industrial Grip, Cooperation, Diplomatic Relations, and Effective Bureaucracy. Counts Kaltenbrunner. Huh. Declare New Daddy. Hungarian Revolution, huh? Oh, an encirclement. Look, very nice. It's all about those encirclements, man. It's all about them encirclements.
Ah, the German Civil War. Nothing like it, except for the one in T Tieno, I guess. I don't think this has changed too much. Von Manchin, did he give you a portrait? Oh. Huh. Okay, Miller looking snazzy as always. Muscovine's gone. Now that's... I'm not thinking I've seen this guy before. And it's Carlton Brunner. Looks pretty... Okay. That's all I'm going to say about him. He looks pretty okay. Get some more encryption and decryption. That'd be good. So, when are they going to capitulate? That's my question. Would you all like to help out? Yeah, I might seriously get some cavalry for us. Yeah, you know what? I'm using these guys as garrisons, but that's alright. Sorry, guys, but you don't get anything from those guys. They submit, hoping to uh, unify, unify the motherland. The Red Army and Alma Ata re willingly re rejoin a country. Thanks, guys. Are a great struggle. Some might call it Mein Kampf, but, you know, those people would be weirdos. Happy 53, everybody. You guys are fine, but there's... Oh, it's other uprisings. All right, question of the Red Army. Expand that REP. The NKVD's grip. We lose political power. Operation House Cleaning. Party of Anti-Corruption. We lose his dictator. Oh, that's not bad. You get more political power that way. Purge of Purges? Our Purgers. Room 7. Meet the agencies. The show goes on. That's not bad. Oh, yeah, wait. Police stability, too. Barrier thaws, A S S R S and S R S. Industrial leap, mutual agreement. Um, not bad. Organization gain, experience gain, and organization. It's not bad. The Red Army spirits into one improves it. Oh, that's cool. Then KVD's grip. I will do that one first. Despite the reformist policies, Lavenshi Palavovich's barriers and KVD remains vigilant. The situation is still dire, and the Iron Group of National Security must continue until further notice. Moscow partisans indicate their support. The Moscow partisans have, thankfully, indicated their support for our government. While by no means unexpected, it is a welcome sign that they are completely willing to work with us. After all, we share a common goal, liberation of the motherland from the fascist pigs and enemies. Yeah, we can go this way. Oh, of course, a good struggle, yeah. I want to get that extra political power first, wherever it is, yeah. I want to learn to stop losing 15% every single day. Department of Anti-Corruption. Corruption is a serious problem in the state apparatus. And it is finally time for the agency to tackle the worsening situation. That would be the official idealistic reasoning for this department, but the reality is corruption is just a very nice thing to be used as a chip in bringing down the administration's political rivals. Yes. Yes, please. Sure, why not? And planes. Oh my goodness. I love helicopters, actually. I, when I experiment in TNO, the helicopters, especially assault helicopters, are just so good. Oh my god. Uh, but actually, here, we have nothing. We have no dockyards. That is not good. Not good. Uh, what do we have here? Are these good, too? Hope so. 20 is okay. Vargas commits suicide. That sucks, bro. And KVD's grip. Minus 0.13 is better than what it was before, but yeah, getting rid of that would be really good. Oh, what are you guys fighting? Soviet Republic of the Novus Obisk. Yeah, huh. Democratic Revolution, eh? Brezhnev. National Bolshevism sounds cool. They request equipment, though. Second only to the Belarusians in their size and authority. The North Moscow Red Army is in great position to make requests from us. And now they've done so, requesting a shipment of military equipment to assist in their destruction of the fascist colonial government in the Western Russia. Should we fulfill the request or refuse it? Of course you can have it. We have none! <laughs> but you may have whatever we have. For the glory of the motherland, of course. Yeah, um... Seriously. Uh, if we had enough army XP, I would. But we gotta save some of this for, uh... Like, land auction and such. These guys are literally the exact same thing. Six combat with a light infantry. No, actually these are stronger. Okay. 640 infantry equipment, huh? Intense support equipment. 640. So if these guys use anti-tank, how much anti-tank do we have? None. Okay, we really have absolutely none. So this will help us out quite a bit. We get 30% more revolutionary communism, which will basically be at 100% then. Crisis in Poland, like always. There's always a crisis. Get 150 more political power. We get 15% more political power and 20% more stability, which is pretty good, I'd say. Pretty good, right? Operation House Cleaning. Special Operations Office. We must get that one unlocked first to see what it's like. Down the hallway, unremarkable storage rooms defined the location. Well... Some of those rooms and doors led to anything that matters. Room 7 remains forever locked, with only the most distinguished 
agents being granted the permissions to conduct operations within the mysterious room 7. Not bad. 53 will have maybe 10 factories. Come on, Moscow Red Army. Oh, oh we can actually send you volunteers. That's actually really nice. You guys have like literally no tanks. There's no point sending you over. Um, you all are suffering from really god-awful supply still. I hate the supply system here. I mean, it makes sense. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's not bad. It could be so much worse. It could be so, so much, so much worse. But, if we get these guys to do this, send over a couple planes here and there. How many planes can we send in total? 300. Oh my gosh, 380. Uh, I sent 100 of these guys. 380? How much cast do we have? Oh, heck yeah. We're going to get a lot of air XP then. Come on, come on, come on. I know it's 400, but whatever. Uh, that's a lot of air XP. Civilian declaration, huh? Nice. Start of the Benelux Revolution. Nice. Good. 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 Good for you. And you guys are where? You're, are you right here? Yeah, that makes sense. I'll go right here. As much as you're probably doing battles up here, maybe a little bit, maybe not at all. Um, doing it right here will be extremely beneficial. Oh, they're doing force defense. Oh no 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 no. That's not good. Oh god, that's not good. Yeah, we definitely gotta help them out here. We get more research done. Okay, so we got our guys over here with no one. All right, so you'll be led by Bagraman, or whatever he says his name, and Vasily Kortis. Oh my goodness, that's so bad. Why are you doing it like this? I'll go charismatic, why not? And how's the air doctrine going? Oh, that's not bad. 13-ish? 18-ish? Nice. We get 0.34 every single day, but Operation House Cleaning. Oh, well, cleaning is an important factor of life. Something you must throw away. The garbage cleaning the place up and room, make room for better things. This principle remains unchanged when it comes to the state and the agency. What the heck is, what is this? What is this to? The new Greek leadership? There you go. Guys, would you like to come down here? They would, but it's taking a while. Actually, I'll go to these divisions. I don't know, man. Force defense. There's time to use force defense, and there's times to not use force defense. So... I sure you got that on as well. Oh my god, they just keep using force defense. Ooh. Yay! We're gonna use cast. I love actually how much flying. Do they even have cast? They wait. Cast get more hmm. Did they change this up? They might have changed this up, yeah. Ah, we're gonna go that way anyways. Screw it. I don't care. Um hey, we're good on better on artillery now, which is nice. Uh you guys still training? Yeah. Finland proposes the White Pact. Less than two decades ago, we were at war with the Finns who outrifled Soviet clay. And now they ask for repentance in the form of alliance. The terms are all so, are, are the so-called White Pact are simple. The Finns and ourselves agree to share military intelligence, access, and docking rights. While well, the Finns will still adhere to bourgeois Republican ideas, those prove a yes, useful ally against announced the collaboration as governments by allowing us to attack south and west at the same time. We can always deny this alliance and let the glorious proletarians forge their own path in the world. Oh. I don't know. Can we go to war with them later? I want to kill them off. South and west. I'll strengthen the Finns. Is it worth doing it with these guys? They're not that strong. Uh, good idea. I'm going to do it for now. We'll see it. I mean, we'll see what happens. That's fine. You know what? So be it. If we take the stability when they lose, whatever. So be it. Whatever. I don't, I don't know. It's my first time playing this. I literally have no idea what's going to happen in the end. So, I'm excited for it, though. A fat man here. Let's see if we can make a little circlement here. Room seven. What is room seven? Purge Suslevites. Replace Belarusian leadership. Oh. Purge partisans. Bulgarian excused. Fighting corruption, huh? Well, we'll see what happens. Um, purge purges. Some officers are getting comfortable with the positions of power. However, these same individuals are usually the ones that know too much. Li liabilities must be eliminated swiftly. Death of Himmler. Oh, Himmler's gone. Goodbye. I you to hold. There you go. That's good to see. 
Destroy the divisions if you can. Don't lose here. Don't lose. Okay, we won, so fine. Get in here, too. Oh, they're probably going to lose here. That's not good. Ooh. We can only have 80? What? What happened? Do they have... That sucks, bro. Ooh. Uh, you know where air bases, man. Yeah, I'm going to shove you all back here, except for 80 of you all. So you stay. I love, it. love how it just flies backwards when you do that. Oh my god. They, we lo they lost Moscow, god dang it. How could you lose Moscow? Bro, seriously. We need to get some uh, research, or some uh, logistic companies too. Hold, hold, hold. They're attacking on three sides, man. He's yeah, learning how to do well, though. I hope these guys don't lose, but it looks like they are. Russian People's Liberation Army. Bunichenko. Uh, 50, it's almost 54 anyways. Some more encryption, decryption, that's be good stuff to get. Good. Keep with it, keep with it. We can still encircle them, maybe. Have a good time with them, maybe. Oh boy, oh boy. Hold for now. Moderate's coup. Don't lose, don't lose. Keep learning, though. We need that army XP. Yeah, we're probably going to lose here. Let's go and retreat this way. Purge, purges. Ah, question of the Red Army. Defeated and alone, the Red Army question must be answered. The future characteristic of the Red Army would be de de detrimental for any real success against the forces of the evil social fascists and the actual fascist sense. Barry must answer the question, what is the Red Army really all about? Operation Ausgleaning, for the longest time. The faction within the NKVD threatened. Leventry Barry's rule, this clique headed by Viktor Ab Abu... Abakumov managed to maintain influence thanks to protection of influential members of the Communist Party. However, when the conspirators finally handled Viktor Abakumov and his cronies have nowhere to hide, they picked the wrong side. Yeah. Oh, this organization. Oh, that sucks. Let's get more political power, I guess. 124 isn't very much, though. Not gonna lie, it's not very much at all. We got Moscow back, that's nice. Oh, man. I, I want this route now just because I, we want to get rid of some of these debuffs. Army experience game was just it's so important to get. Allocate funding for the military? War spending is especially important in these dangerous times. Or desperate times. The Red Army requires additional funding to even have a fighting chance against the mighty imperialist armies. Oh, crap. We're about to get circled here ourselves? Bro, that would suck. Jarl Slavel. Keep learning, keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. Nice. A little bit two at a time. There you go, two with that one. Decryption. More decryption. They are just trying to wail against us, man. Only 40? Man, why are you hurting us so much? Yeah, these guys are very strong. Do they get buffs from anybody or something like that? No, they're not. Hmm. The Red Army's future, battered and once humiliated by the Wehrmacht. The Red Army lost. <clears throat> its character in the troubling years that followed, further political divide and instability allowed the military to become a shadow of its former self and lacking identity and resolve. As no tone had finally changed yet, with newfound stability, the Central Committee and the General Secretary have instructed the Red Army officers to start reforging this once invincible army, giving them one simple motto to be used as the direction of which the Red Army shall head from now on. Patriotic war lives on. Oh, which way are we doing for land option? I have no idea. That's not land option. Combined operations, asymmetric warfare. I kind of prefer strategic theorem because it gives you so much max entrenchment. Plus, 10 is so nice. I like strategic theorem still, though. Um, this stuff seems okay. Air stuff is not bad. Land stuff is not bad either, even though I would... Ooh. Infantry gets more organization, breakthrough, and speed. Reconnaissance, ground support is not bad, though, if you have as long as you have air superiority. 
Or asymmetric guerrilla warfare. Well, hmm, that's not bad. You get a lot more population, even though we hopefully won't need all that population. Plus five more max entrenchment. Minus 20% consumer good. You get 8% or supply consumption. 8% recruitable population. Jesus, that's strong. More soft attack, less production cost. Uh, 11%? Jesus Christ! That's so strong! We're already on extensive conscription, though. Do we get any extra population manpower here? Because it's either asymmetric or this one here. Mm. Cost reduction. Cost reduction. It says, it says asymmetric. Uh, what would Beria choose? 100% cost reduction for asymmetric, though. That's not bad. That's basically free. Strategic retreat. You get 2% population there, too. Recovery and soft attack. Uh, more line attack. But I'm not using line artillery in my divisions, though. Plus 50. Okay, that's not bad. 15 max entrenchments. Not bad. Ooh. You know what? Oh, man. I think we're going to go asymmetric doctrine. I get 20 point. Yeah, okay. We'll go asymmetric. Why not? The patriotic war lives on. We should be able to get this for free, right? This is 100% reduction cost. Oh, military exercises. Dr daily drills and monthly war games. Red Army under the Barrier Administration will be thoroughly trained to maximize its quality. Yeah, that's what we're here to do. Maximize quality. Yeah. Totally. Please be able to win. Please win. <laughs> Please clap. Support equipment is looking not too bad, though. Um, with you guys. Motorized support artillery, huh? Engineers. Yeah, you're going to need some serious engineers on those bad boys. Uh-oh. Novus will be is just fine. Well, I kind of figured they would eventually, so. And we need some logistic companies, too, because some of these areas are not looking good. Like up here. Oh, my God, it's so bad. But we should do okay against them, right? All right. What focus are they doing to go to war with us? I'm glad we didn't choose the one that gives us weekly stability yet. Private guess, of Soviet Vacation. Oh, wow. Weekly map plus 350, huh? Oh, did the fascists win? Yeah, the fascists, I guess, won. Or just you did well. Huh. Treaty of Honolulu, alright. Well, we're still building ourselves up here somewhat, so let's get it. Maybe an air base, if possible, there. Mass affection. Serving news is a major portion of our armed breeze. As chosen a defect of the enemy, they've taken a significant number of weapons and men with them, and hopefully this won't affect us too much in the long run. Russian Reconquest dot three. That's not good. Um, can we save the game, maybe, perhaps? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay. My god. Holy crap. The game takes way too long to save. Oh my goodness. Actually, saving, you know, the saving portion is not the problem. It's the menu portion that's a problem. Oh my goodness. Oh wait, what the heck? Wait, why did the line get higher? Oh, that's not good. Oh, they got some good tanks, too. Trench. We lost divisions here. God dang it. Well, I'm not going to move them. They can attack us. Unless, unless some, some place like this. If it's like here, then that's fine. Then. Anything other than that, like then no. Ooh. More attack is pretty good. Ooh, plus 10. Oh, I gotta go plus 10. As much as I want more attack. Plus 10 is super strong. That's so nice. Uh, you guys are back. Good. Here. Uh, just join him. There you go. That'll be nice and strong for us. Very good. Not bad. They got some over divisions. Hopefully they got the bad ones. And mutual agreement. <clears throat> Between the operation of the military and the administration's politics, a clear mutual understanding must be reached for the sake of the state. Perhaps the two should finally come to an agreement. Perhaps yes, perhaps no, but perhaps absolutely. Omsk. Can you actually win there? You probably can, honestly. Oh, it's going to be quite the struggle. Oh, the German Civil War is over while we're still killing ourselves here, too. Alright. Can you actually win there, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Because we still have to spread divisions out up through there as well, but we'll see what happens. 
Anything else here different? No? Okay. Need some rubber, though. That'd be kind of nice. Alright, so you guys here. Let him attack us in Mediterranean Union. Alright. Yeah, just kind of pause for now. It's fine. They're still attacking us, so... Give them time. They want to kill themselves. That's fine with me. Give the guys some more time to get more, uh... Experience one up. Always good. Always welcome. Congo Conflict. Nice. Anything there? No. Let's go and grab some logistics. Oh, we already have logistics. Some better logistics then. And grab some more decryption as well. What else are we missing? Guns, artillery, support equipment. We have some medium tanks. A few pieces of anti-air. APCs. Trains are nice as well. Not attacking as much as I'd like, but whatever. Get more organization. A lot more army XP, please. Come on. We were supposed to get reductions, right? Um, I guess that was a lie from the event. We didn't get any reduction. That's stupid. Because we don't attack the air, but... Alright. More defense and organization sounds really good to me. And actually, we'll go strategic retreat. Guerrilla warfare is nice and all, but... As much as I love minus 20% supply consumption, that's so good. More soft attack and more organization is really good as well. Plus five entrenchment, but we're gonna get a lot of defense and organization. You get even more defense and organization. You get two percent more population over here, even though, even though you get two percent even more over that one. You get more soft attack as well, recovery rate, more land out attack. You get uh, soft attack for land infantry, which we might use. We'll see what happens. Maybe not. Maybe maybe not. But we do get plus fifteen, fifteen, not five, but fifteen max entrenchment. I mean that's so strong already. That's so strong. That's so nice. How could anyone pass it out? I didn't realize that I pissed 15. And even with all those buffs on the right side, you can still push and do offensives, it sounds like. Could be wrong with that, but it sounds like you could. Oh, yeah, they're definitely trying to move against us. Takahito up oh, usurps the throne. All right. Well, good luck with that. We lost 12,000 to the 31,000. Not bad. Don't worry about attacking. Yeah, there goes a tank. Tanky, go vroom, 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 vroom. Chuikov and Daria. Keep getting it. We're getting slightly more army XP than we were earlier, which is good. Oh, improved anti tank. Very nice. Artillery. Get some better artillery as well. Two cop and barrier, but will impair the generals. Military officers are important assets of the Red Army, both. And with this reason alone, our lower Red Army generals should be saluted and empowered. A section of the tree is locked. Oh, is that up here? A new plan? Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. I don't really need it, though, too much. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, we're going to read about the Oath of Re Re Reformation. Reclamation. It's time to craft new Oath of Allegiance for the Red Army. There are too many enemies to the state, and a new updated Oath will better reflect the current situation. Chuikov and Beria. The room was secluded and prepared specifically for this occasion. Beria waited outside alongside the guards guarding both sides of the door, looking at them. He asked, Do I look like a clown? And they had to shake their heads because they didn't want to dare tell him that it looked like a folded bag of fleas. Shortly after, he heard loud footsteps approaching the corridor. Vasily Chuikov was approaching them with a serious expression, sharp and strict. He extended his hand when they met, offering a firm handshake. Greetings, comrade. Greetings, Beria replied. Beria then gestured, leading Chuikov into the room while the guards remained on duty. Sparing no time for filler, Beria reminded Chuikov the purpose of this meeting. So, comrade, Beria fiddled with his glasses. I can assure you the Union appreciates your military service. It will be a shame to have it challenged by a few <clears throat> incidents. What are you implying, comrade? Chuikov snaps back. The NKVD has discovered multiple links connecting you with the mistakes committed by those dogs led by Mikhail Andreevich. General, we truly admire your work, and I personally have already dismissed these reports. What do you want? You see, the motherland is desperate for unity, and as a national heroes that we are, I can let bygones be bygones if we can assure uh, cooperation. Bear takes his glasses off. The Red Army is your domain, but your men must be on the party's side. Ch Chuikov shows slight hesitation before bursting into laughter, extending his arm and offering another handshake. We have a deal, Pavlovich. Unnecessary alliance. Stability is nice, even though who cares about political power, I guess. But hey, if you enjoyed today's first episode, which felt like it just started five minutes ago, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will continue struggling against the Soviet Republic of Novosibirsk led by a certain Vans Nesinski. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.